Welcome to our third video on fluid kinematics for ENME 331. This is on streak lines and this is preceded of, by our two videos first on streamlines and then on path lines. And we're going to talk, show a little bit of animations and then do a worked example to go along with on how to calculate it and then discuss how the three are similar and different. Okay, so let's start, go back again to our here we see again our simulation of the flow going around a cylinder um, with these smoke paths being released upstream and carried into the flow. We saw how that these smoke lines were neither path lines nor stream lines uh, and it turns out that they are in fact streak lines and streak lines are by definition collections of marked particles that have been released into the flow from some specified point. Now, streak lines are most useful in experiments because they're easy to generate in physical conditions, physical realities like wind tunnels and stuff. So this is often what you see. And as we've illustrated and we'll also discuss at the end, streak lines, streamlines, and path lines all look the same if you have a steady flow. Now, in this particular case, part of the flow is steady upstream of the cylinder, and the flow downstream is unsteady, so we'll be able to see this uh, clearly at the end if you don't already happen to notice it now. All right, so let's go back to our definitions and do our worked example, and then we can discuss it. All right, so as I mentioned, a streak line here is a collection of fluid elements that have been released at successive times so successive times is important from a given location and visualized at one instant in time. All right, this is in contrast to a path line where that trajectory represented the motion of that marked element through time. This is this line exists at, and is defined at one instant in time and it changes its shape at different instants in time if the flow is unsteady. All right, so now for this example, we're going to go and look again at this um, oscillating plate. But uh, just to highlight, this is constructed from tracking fluid particles released at different times. And we can utilize what we have from our path line. Um, but instead of t naught, the release time now determines the position along the streak line. And so this is the parameterization of our streak line curve. Where if you remember, for our path line, the instant t, t was our parameter because that controlled where you were along its length of that history of that individual particle. All right, to illustrate this, I'm going to show you there in dark purple, this curve is the path line of our fluid element that has released here at that instant. And we will show the fluid particle moving along the path and the different streak lines and how those evolve as time goes on. So the streak line is changed, but again, that particle that we released is following along its path line and is moving further and further down in this streak line that is behaving as shown in the figure there. All right, so let's now go back to our worked example and calculate what the streak line looks like. Again, if we have you start off doing the same thing that you did for our path line and so we end up with if you go back to that one our two curves where x minus x naught equals this constant a times a natural logarithm of 1 plus t divided by 1 plus t naught and then we had y minus y naught is equal to b divided by 3 times t cubed minus t naught cubed. All right, so now if we want to calculate the streak line here, then what I would have to do is pick different t naughts to simulate different release times. So I'd have to calculate x1, y1 for t naught equals to t1. Then I'd have x2 y2 for t naught equals to t2. So that would be a marker element that was released from x naught, y naught at a different time, and then so on. And again, this would get 
then drawing a, allow me to draw a curve connecting all those points together. Very tedious to do, but um, if you're using a program like MATLAB or something, it would probably be the most practical way to do it. Um, if we want to come up with a, a function for this, what we need to do is eliminate um, the pair, the uh, t naught from these two equations. And so what we're going to have is let's solve this equation up here for t naught. In doing so, what we get is t naught is equal to 1 plus t divided by the exponent of x minus x naught divided by a minus 1. Okay, and now we want to plug that and combine that into this equation here. So what we get in the end would be y is equal to y naught plus b divided by 3. Now we're solving, we're replacing t naught. So here we have t cubed minus, and then we're going to have this expression that we solve for, for t naught. So that is 1 plus t divided by the exponent of x minus x naught divided by a minus 1. And then that whole quantity has to be cubed. Okay, and so that is our expression here for the streak line. What does this look like? Well, T again here is, we have to say at what instant in time we want to visualize it. So T is a constant for this. That tells us where in time we are to pick our curve. X naught and Y naught are also constants. So here we have Y is some function of X, and it's got an exponent and then some cubes. So this is a pretty complicated function. It's kind of hard to see exactly what it will look like. So I've gone ahead and put it on our plot here again and let's let's have that play again so you can see now this has our path lines our streamlines and our streak line is this blue curve here and you can see more and more particles get added on to this release point and here were our original four uh, marked particles that I had for the path line example that are tracking out near the end of that. And I've released many more particles in between those times. And you can see here that the streak line then looks different from both the streamlines and the path lines in this very simple, unsteady flow. So if the flow is steady, these will all look the same. But for unsteady flows, they will most likely be different. You can come up with some special unsteady flows where they look the same, namely one-dimensional flows. They would be similar, but in this case, and in general, you can't say anything about them being similar. Um, let's go ahead and go back to our... And so here we see these streaks that are coming in here are indeed streak lines, continually releasing smoke, smoke, mark smoke particles into the flow, and these Thicker blobs are ones that are identified um, make, to make it more easy to see. And these look nothing like, as we pointed out earlier, the streak lines uh, do not look like the path lines or the streamlines in the unsteady portion downstream of the cylinder. However, upstream, you can see where the flow is steady. In this region, the streamline, the streak line, and the path line would all follow around the same position. And it's only when this starts to become unsteady here at this point do they deviate from one another. Okay, thank you, and I hope that helps.